And one of the guys said to me, if we lined everybody up that was at this tournament, I would have never have picked you out to be the one to have a cardiac arrest. And that really sort of resonated with me that, that it happens to anybody. Yeah, yeah. No matter what age, yeah, it can literally happen to anybody at any time. And so much undiagnosed conditions, um, you know, youngsters, you see it in the papers every day. You know, I mean, I'm a big American football fan and, you know, watching DeMar Hamlin have his right. cardiac arrest. I'm actually yeah. a Buffalo Bills supporter as well. So that was quite a difficult thing to watch. And I was watching it live and, you know, you just realise that, you know, this is happening every day to... Yep. And affecting families and affecting people every day. Yeah, age is not per se the factor that yeah, like it's not per se eighty or olds that like you said that will have it. It's exactly it's young people mm-hmm. uh, that have it too, or very fit people even people that you never would have expected it to happen to. It happens to it can happen to everyone. Yeah, and that's very scary. Yeah, I mean you take like Christian Eriksen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a guy. Yep, uh, yep. I mean, probably one of the fittest guys you come out at yeah. the top of his profession, a professional profession, and, that, and it happens to him. So, yeah, and I, th- I think the awareness levels are getting better, especially in the UK. There's a lot more defibs around. You know, there's a lot more VR training and stuff, and people are becoming aware of it. And there's some fantastic people doing some fantastic work out there to get the awareness levels up, you know, like like self to, because there's more and more and more is needed. And, and CPR training, especially if you get CPR training at a young age or um, we're trying to enforce that. Yeah, I'm I'm quite a big believer in if you're running like a social event or, or a social event like sports event like we were, that there should be some trained people with CPR and a DFib should be available for sure, all the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was talking to um, the the previous episode. I was talking to a cop, uh, and he is actually right now because he had a cardiac arrest as well. Very young guy, very fit. And uh, he's now uh, also really trying to promote like having more AEDs in in public places, but also like most of the time he said like people have a cardiac arrest not at the swimming pool but at their home. Uh-huh. And he also pointed out like it's quite crazy that we don't have one in apartments or at home. And I know it can be maybe expensive, but at the same time it could save so many lives. Like the reason why the survivor rate is so low is because we just don't have the right tools at the right moment many times. Yeah, yeah I mean you're right. I mean, I mean we've got a couple here, but you know, oh, you I do. know yeah. where I live in Wales, there is one over the road in a, in a in a telephone box. What was an old oh, yeah. telephone box? Yeah. But but if my wife was to go out there, get that get yeah. that code, and come back, that would be ten minutes. Yes. Yeah. So. That's way too much, right? Too much for too much, yeah. yeah, yeah. You need to immediately act. Ten minutes is too long. Yeah, and yeah, you know, my son wouldn't be doing CPR for ten minutes. Yeah, you know, CPR is difficult. It, it is difficult to do. I don't think people appreciate it. it's quite difficult to do for a long period. It's of a time workout. Before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so again, that that here, you know, obviously now you've got your own in ICD implanted, mm-hmm. but for somebody else, something to live on a farm with a few other people then uh, that we'd have to go and get that one. And I know in my head that that is too long. Yes, it is. From experience, then, mm-hmm. to go and get one.